What do you work as? I'm a chemist. Oh. Can you? No. A friend of mine described a class at Georgia Tech. Uh, this was a chemistry class. And I'm paraphrasing here and blurring the details a little. But he basically asked the class, Show of hands, how many of you are here to make uh, the boomies? And some people, you know, raise their hands sort of jokingly. They said, all right, how many of you are here to uh, learn how to make the uh, happy sugars, shall we say? And, and uh, you know, some other people raise their hands jokingly. He said, I see some of you raised your hands twice for both things. You will pass. The rest of you will fail. And that was the introduction to chemistry at Georgia Tech. People giving plants and animals credit. Fungi. Fungi doing everything. Fungi literally being the foundation of all life on Earth. This was actually something I didn't know. I'm good at, like, technical and engineering and physical science. Organic and squidgy stuff. Not so much. But hey, I'm, I'm always up for learning stuff, so let's go. Hello, bro. You good at math, right? Hi. Yes, I I am. Okay, good. If I cut a cake into three pieces, each piece will be 0 0.3 infinity of the main piece, right? Correct. Okay, if we multiply three by 0 0.3 infinity, we get 0 0.9 infinity. So what happened to 0 0.001? Well, you will find it on the knife. Oh, thanks. We jump from mathematics to fluid dynamics really fast. I, I, I enjoy this. Discovering something new. Physics. Chemistry. Wow. Amazing. Biology. Kill it. Kill it now. The Earth is 4,000 years old. Change my mind. No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years. It decays into radium-226, which in turn decays into radon-222. Radon-222 becomes polonium-210, which finally decays into a stable nucleide lead. The existence of lead as an element disproves the 4,000-year-old myth. That's very concise. I, I had a horrible, horrible chemistry teacher and just generally bad teachers when it came to all of the periodic table stuff. And I've only recently started to revisit it on my own and actually found it really fascinating now that there's like better teachers on, I don't know, YouTube. But that's such a succinct explanation and kind of general overview of this is how we can calculate the age of things. Here is the logical step be steps behind it. Not a field I know anything about, but still very cool. Researchers in the 70s giving LSD to dolphins. Come on, speak English. Wow, this is hella tight. If you haven't seen them, look up this studies where they, they fed spiders a, a, a wide range of, of happy substances and look at the webs they weave it's it's really interesting biologist cells multiply by dividing mathematicians huh. ah, what what my life is a lie imagine you spend years on research only to be called at al on one hand yeah that's kind of upsetting on the other hand it would be kind of nice to know that your research has become so like is so solid and held up that it's just like referred to as just common knowledge now. That, that'd be kind of a cool feeling, just a little bit. A science teacher's worst fear. Today I said, or <clears throat> instead of organism, in front of 30 13 year olds. I was about to say, you could probably, you know, walk away from it unscathed, but uh, yeah, you just said that in much front of a bunch of middle schoolers who feed, but their power is increased off of inappropriate jokes. Ah, uh, because I remember what I was like as a middle schooler, insufferable. Ah, uh, so, I'm so sorry. Marvel! Infinity War is the most ambitious crossover event in history! Physics! And then just lots of physicists. I don't even know what this what this event was, because I, I'm bad at the history parts of this. But I'm sure there's 17 people in the comments just typing up a neat little paragraph, so uh, scroll, or Google, or something. Hurry! Spray it with water! Dihydrogen monoxide is an acid with a pH level of 7. <laughs> I... That's a higher pH level than any other acid. <laughs> For anyone who's lost, and, and there's no obligation to get any one of these jokes, I will do my best to explain. Dihydrogen monoxide is just H2O which is water. It's it's the scary name for water that you can use to frighten granola, you know, granola moms. And the higher pH level uh, is just on a scale, on a pH scale, a lower number is an acid and a higher number is a base. And seven is considered like the neutral. Uh, so it is technically higher than any other acid because if you go above seven, you have hit a base and you are no longer an acid. 
I actually don't know if water, like seven, is considered a base or an acid. I always just thought it was considered neutral, but I, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, this is a great thing for, you know, flat earth people or anyone that thinks voting machines gave their children autism. I think that's how the conspiracy theorists work. Trees getting all the credit. Algae, which produce 60% of oxygen. I didn't know this. Although if you want to get all sciencey about it, I, I think the difference between these two is greater than 20%. But again, I learned something. I don't know anything about all the organic squidgy science. Atoms and molecules in school books. Atoms and molecules in research papers. Okay, this one I, I, I don't get at all. I'm sorry, I'm dumb. Is one just more professional? <laughs> oh, I'm stupid, I'm sorry. Other biologists of the time. Skeptical of the theory of natural selection. The church. Charles Darwin unable to find a coherent theory for the inheritance of biological factors. Gregor Mendel, some fracking peas. This is kind of fascinating. I'm not gonna do the whole story here because I'm not qualified to, but look it up. Uh, dude basically showed inheritance and dominant and recessive genes by focusing on characteristics of peas and showing that like, if, if you bred a yellow pea plant and a green pea plant, uh, like the offspring would always have, would always be yellow. But then in like the next generation, uh, green would show back up at a, at a specific ratio. And then you, from that, you could start to extrapolate recessive and dominant, uh, at the time characteristics, but it ended up being dominant and recessive genes. Do you think it's possible for someone to actually be very intelligent, but poor at articulating the point they're trying to make? So they come across as stupid. Oh my God, I work with engineers all day. Have you met engineers? <laughs> what did I just say? What did I just, oh my God. Every time you're on like an engineering team, uh, Fortunately, the, 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 my current job is amazing, but sometimes like if you're working with another company, you'll notice like there's an engineering team and like one of them is good at communicating and the others very smart, no idea how to communicate. And you'll be going back and forth with the, you know, the vendor or the other company and, and everything will just get funneled through the one engineer that can like converse. Pounds, kilograms, zero, yes, zero is zero. Uh, inches, centimeters, zero is zero. Yes, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no. Fahrenheit, Kelvin, Rankin. Oh, wait, wait, wait. R is that weird uh, rear, rear mirror, rear, rear mirror or something. And then RA is Rankin and then Celsius. I think Rankin and Kelvin agree on zero because they're both absolute temperature, if my memory serves me right. So there is that, uh, but like they, they then change their scales as you go up in degrees and Fahrenheit and Celsius have been at it for years. Neither of them is better. It's just Fahrenheit is better for zero to a hundred in terms of human comfort and Celsius is zero to a hundred for, for, you know, is water boiling. Celsius is Android, Fahrenheit is Apple, pretty much. How people think nuclear power works. <laughs> How nuclear power actually works. That's right. That's pretty much, pretty much all power generation is how do we create a bunch of heat and then use that to heat up some water and throw it through a turbine? Spin the turbine really fast, fast it goes to an exciter that generates power and then we send that power out to the grid. I'm skipping a lot of steps, but but that's pretty much like all of it. Like there's no nuclear reactor just with some terminals on the side and just like the power comes from the nuclear reaction. The closest we have to that is like fuel cells, but but that's, that's an entirely different thing. Getting a unit named after you. <laughs> Becoming a unit. Winning a Nobel Prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of. Yeah, I'd much rather have a unit named after me. <laughs> I'm gonna develop the unit of chaos. Lexans, Lexians. It's probably already a measurement of something else. X equals X plus one. Ha <laughs> programmers. Mathematicians. <laughs> yes, in you know, programming, this would uh, increment. So like, uh, I want a thing to do something 10 times. You say X equals X plus one. This means X equals now one. X equals now two, three, and then I have a thi another thing in the next step that says, when X equals 10, stop doing this thing. And then this is, it's like a little counter. And mathematicians uh, just look at that and immediately have a stroke. Black hole, literally anything. Hawking radiation. I don't understand the, the, the back end science for this well enough, but I know that this is like vaguely what they use to detect black holes, I think. Totally loving Taylor Swift's suit, which is designed to break up her shape against the background, thereby making it difficult for German U-boats <laughs> to calculate her range, speed, and direction. Yeah, for, uh, for a little bit there, there were a whole bunch of basically zebra stripey looking patterns on uh, Navy ships. Look them up. They look really cool, but there are a whole bunch of uh, patterns done for a whole bunch of different reasons. And it was basically to make it hard to tell what direction the ship was going in, how fast, 
etc. And and they looked kind of like that. <laughs> Join the resistance. Oh, mm. oh, this is stupid. But uh, <laughs> resistors are wires that basically cut down on the amount of power delivered through a circuit um, without decreasing its voltage. So uh, if you think of electricity like water, uh, voltage is how big the pipe is and amperage is how fast the water is flowing through it. Really, how forcefully. Um, resistors take a little bit of the amperage out. They take a little bit of the power out while keeping the same voltage and they basically dissipate it as heat. So they can be very, very tiny. Just like, it's a little bit just like protect an LED so that an LED lights up and it doesn't burn itself up. Or they can be very big and require heat sinks and, and stuff like that. But uh, the measurement of resistance is ohm. Literally, OHM. It comes from Ohm's Law and look it up because I'm not going to turn this into a five minute explanation. <laughs> I'm sorry, editing team. Krebs cycle. Forget the Krebs cycle. Learn the Krebs cycle. Oh, I'm going to go learn the Krebs cycle right now because I have no idea what you're talking about. The Krebs cycle is used by organisms that respire as opposed to organisms that ferment to generate energy, either by anaerobic respiration or aerobic respiration. I, I, uh, this is organic crap. I, I don't know uh, the life stuff. Take your breathing crap and, and bring me some mechanical tolerances. Look, a blue red car. Okay, that's even less context than might be necessary to actually make the joke, but yes, I think this is a quantum fun physics joke where the act of observing a thing can change its properties. Scientist, to prevent pollution and the destruction of marine ecosystems, you should reduce the amount of plastic that you use. Also scientists, well, here's the thing. The amount of plastic that scientists use can have like exponential effects on like the amount, the other types of things that we do in the world. I think uh, of all of the things between that and like a, a single use plastic takeout container for like a burger, I, th the scientists can use the plastic. Screw paper straws though. Like, oh my God, no. They did Rosalind Franklin dirty and she shouldn't be reduced to a footnote in the history of DNA research. A lot of things shouldn't, shouldn't be, shouldn't. But uh, uh, how would you change history if you could time travel? Travel Me? You know that major discovery you made after years of studying DNA? After you die, Watson and Crick are going to pass it off as their own. What? Win a Nobel Prize, give only passing reference to your contributions, and make uh, nexist observations about your appearance in their autobiographies. Keep that crap to yourself and trust no bastard. Publish your findings ASAP. Well, crap, thanks for letting me know. So I'm really bad with names and faces. Like, besides being blind, I'm pretty sure I have face blindness. However, I have heard of the name Rosalind Franklin. I have not heard of Watson and Crick. So I maybe I'm just from the correct timeline or something, or at least this timeline. I'm from a meme timeline. I, I'm okay with this. Parrot, chat GPT. Uh, finally, we're, we're back in an area I'm actually prepared to speak in. It's capable of mimicking human speech. <gasps> capable of mimicking human writing. Does not understand what it means. Does not understand what it means, correct. Humans have known for thousands of years. Humans have known for less than half a year. Very little respect from people. What? Everyone is losing their crap over it. What? <laughs> okay, first off, I respect parrots because they're bird and they're cute and I respect all animals, sometimes more than humans. Second off, uh, if I ask a, a parrot to write me an outline of some code, not like all the code, but just like, I just need some framework and some basic syntax so I can fill in some stuff myself and not, to, not have to retype this for the 11th billion time. Um, I, I don't think the parrot's going to do a very good job. Yes, there are many problems with ChatGPT. I think people think it's way smarter than it actually is. But but I, I still think, you know, people people can lose their mind over it a little bit. It, it is a little bit more impressive than a parrot, even though I love parrots. Professor, can you show DNA and RNA visually? Me. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just the shape. That's all it is. <laughs> this is stupid, but it's funny. I left my front door open and my Roomba just went out and I can't find it. What are the consequences of this? It has no natural predators. Eh, it'll be dead soon. Nature abhors a vacuum. <laughs> this is so dumb, but so funny. 
This is a smart dumb. This is my favorite kind of dumb. The Romans naming planets. This looks huge. Let's name it King of the Gods, Jupiter. Modern astronomers naming exoplanets. Hmm, ugly 0530 Lima, bravo. That there is, there are reasons for it, but, but it does, yeah, it does end up looking kind of funny. Mathematicians when they can't get a 100% accurate solution. Cosmologists when their solution is within five orders of magnitude of the answer. See, I thought this was gonna go into chemistry. My physics lecturer recently told me of a class that had attended where the professor had rounded pi to 10 for the sake of ease. Looks like someone found love while writing a book. Chemistry matters. Chemistry matters. Tanyan Tun, Chen Ling Kuang, John Sadler, Emily Clara, I think that is, it's kind of pixely. And then we have the author credits again. Uh, Tanyan Tun, Chen Ling Kuang, John Sadler, Emily Sadler. Oh! I hope that I hope that's what actually happened. My physics teacher explaining if the sun vanishes, we won't know it for eight minutes. Me, who said it will be more than that if it happens at night. True. You said we. You didn't say like the planet wouldn't know it. Like we. So not only is it you know where we are on the globe, where we are in that rotation on the globe, and also what angle. Because if we were at the North Pole, we might not know for months. God, that'd be sad. Like the sun goes down and then it just never comes back. As long as the tomb is closed, Jesus is both alive and dead. Saint Schrodinger, the forgotten disciple. Man, that's 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 what they should have stuck to. As soon as we open the tomb, it, Jesus will be observed and it will modify Jesus's properties. Me, biology, chemistry, physics. <laughs> this is how I feel. Oh my god, I barely passed chemistry. Oh my god, I just don't understand it. Partially because I looked at everything in chemistry and it was just like, okay, but why does that happen? And like the answer for why things happen, if you have to keep drilling down to the level I need to actually like understand and retain information is like ridiculously advanced and I couldn't understand like yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy and all that. The Black Plague disappeared without a vaccine, just saying. Oh God, oh no. Why, why are you allowed to like do business with people? It, it killed a third of Europe. Yeah. Yeah, so so viruses. Viruses don't want to kill everything. Like, they, they, they want to replicate. and get this. So, like, a virus that is 100% deadly is not a good virus. It's too aggressive and won't be able to propagate and it'll it'll kill out its host pool. Uh, so, so, yeah, this is... This is what happens when you uh, when you just have a virus that's completely unchecked and you, and you don't take any mitigation measures because you don't know the mitigation member measures it's like not their fault. But the pancake didn't kill a third of Europe, so I'm I'm thinking you know we we're doing better. TLDR for temperature scales. Oh here we go. Oh uh, yeah Fahrenheit zero really cold outside. 100 really hot outside. This is why Fahrenheit is useful because it's just like zero to 100. How hot do you feel? Versus Celsius zero barely cold outside. 100 dead. This is why Celsius is sometimes hard for people to understand. We didn't grow up with it. Versus Kelvin <laughs> zero dead. 100 dead. Kel Kelvin in general is like a scale for measuring insane things like cosmic things. Uh, zero is absolute zero like the, the coldest you can coldest cold. I think it's negative 273 Celsius, but I'm not, I don't feel like Googling it right now. And if I make a fool of myself, I really don't care. 100 Kelvin is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna Google this because I don't want to actually make a fool of myself. 100, uh, 100 Kelvin is still really damn cold. Uh, it comes out to negative 279 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 173 degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, you're just dead. Just de if, if you see a number on the Kelvin scale, it is generally not a friendly number. Just just don't. Most of the Mars scenes in The Martian 2015 were actually filmed. Most? What do you mean most? Were actually filmed on Earth. What do you mean most? Oh, did they use like a little bit of photo footage from like one of the probes or something? That would actually have been really cool. Or some space footage. That, that'd actually be cool. I'd like that. Like you use footage from Curiosity as the background of the green screen. So like you actually have a Martian landscape behind you. That'd be so cool. Alignment chart. Science YouTuber edition. Lawful good. SciShow, hand green, all that good stuff. Neutral good. Oh, they have Tom Scott. He's one of my fa I mean, everyone loves Hank Green. So like, do I need to? I donate to their crash course thing. But like Tom Scott, absolutely love. Chaotic good. Mind field. I think I've seen that. Uh, Lawful neutral. Smarter every day. I think I've seen them. True neutral. I don't recognize you at all, but I'm dumb. Chaotic neutral. Vsauce. Lawful evil. I recognize your logo, but I don't remember your channel. I'm sorry. Lawful evil. What, what is crash course in lawful evil? Chaotic evil. I recognize you, but I 
I'm really bad with faces. Like, there need to be actual text channel names for this, this stuff. I'm sure I know everybody on here, but I would need to hear their voice or see their actual channel name. When you realize not everyone can see images in their head, but only visualize the word or concept. This, <laughs> this motherfucker can't conjure an apple. Yeah, I, I was really confused by that. Especially because, like, I don't see well, so, like, I mentally just... I'm st I'm a visual learner, ironically. In his mind, it made perfect sense. These so-called environmentally friendly wind turbines are all well and good, but surely, statistically... Oh, surely, hmm... 50% of the time, uh, the wind is blowing the other way. Oh my Jesus Christ. We share a plan with the people. This will make them spin in the opposite direction. <laughs> Sucking power for- ah! It gets worse! From the grid instead? What? I'm only a butcher. Yeah, we can tell. And I figured that out. Did you? Uh, so, uh, what? We, we pay boffins like Professor Brian Cox? Fat research grants for is anybody's guess? Oh, I see. That was weirdly worded. Uh, and I figured that out. So what? We pay boffins like Professor Brian Cox? Fat research grants for is anybody's guess. Adam Newth. Stratford upon Avon. Uh, stick to, stick to butchering. <laughs> Stick to butcher. This is why I do tech explanations on my own channel because it's much more socially acceptable to make fun of and 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 berate people for not reading the fracking manual. I, I don't. I don't. I don't, I would like to see a wind turbine where you could actually apply power and like accelerate the wind. Like no, this is just a giant fan now. <laughs> Hey, fellas. Is your girl confusing at times? Does she solve your problems? Is she a bit bigger on top than she is on the bottom? That's not your girl. That's the quadratic formula. What researchers study? Mathematician. What is? Scientist. What probably is? Engineers. What isn't yet? <laughs> Bioengineers. What never should have been. I, I love this so much, and this is, this is why I love hanging out with engineering people. I hate how the stereotype is that dolphins are good and sharks are evil, when dolphins are so smart that they have the capacity for evil, but sharks are simple fish who can only be true neutral. So even if a minority of dolphins are evil, there are still more evil dolphins than sharks. Quality marine philosophy discourse. <laughs> why I love Tumblr. But yeah, I, and I think evil is attributed to things that people don't understand or want to understand or are afraid of or feel uh, threatens their livelihoods. Yes, I'm talking about a lot of things right now. Just because you nail the term evil to something doesn't make it evil. This kid's going places. Do plants sneeze? Hypothesis. Plants probably sneeze. Experiment. Feathers. Pepper. Feet. <laughs> Conclusion. Plants don't sneeze. I do think you need a few more rounds of experimentation, but uh, I, I think your conclusion is probably fairly sound at this point. I can grow on fracking concrete. And no, the pH of the soil is too high. I'm dying. Yeah, this is this is. I don't understand people that do gardens. Uh, beautiful stuff, but like, you have the patience to to deal with like a bunch of whiny plants, and then it snows and they all die anyway. Why? Why? What are you doing? <laughs> I don't understand. A virus? Not on my watch. Ha! Try and survive a fever if you can. Do you see that, guys? Am I a problem solver or what, guys? <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like that. Our, our our body's immediate reaction to like, ah, oh, that's a problem. Cook it. If cows go moo and cats go meow and ducks go quack and dogs go woof, what is the designated sound that humans make? The serious answer to this would probably be some sort of grunting noise like, uh, or something like that. But I like to think it's what the frack is this? What the frack is this? What the frack is this? Hey, Jimmy, where's your atomic model? Oh, no. Well, it's due today. I completely forgot. Um, do I at least get 99.99999% partial credit for empty space? <laughs> uh, that's funny. I like that. That's dumb. I love it. Another installment of science stand-up. KFC has asked me to edit the chicken genome. They want something crisper. Hee <laughs> hee. CRISPR is a type of uh, gene editing uh, technology. Uh, it stands for, and I had to look this up because I knew of the thing, but I didn't know what it stands for. Uh, clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. <sighs> Some Shakespearean stuff. But yeah, it's, it's just it's just the name. <laughs> it's so dumb. 
Uh, science jokes rely heavily on dad humor. My mom, study so you don't have to wash dishes for a living. Me. Yeah, this is this is why I went to a technology field because if I need to clean up something, I hit Control A and delete, <laughs> or Shift Delete if I'm feeling spicy. One gram, fifteen grams. What? What? Um, why don't they make uh bulletproof vests out of diamond if it is the hardest metal? It's not the hardest, anyways. Um, cause it's too heavy. One gram of diamond weighs something like fifteen grams. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, I know what you're going for. A, a small amount of diamond weighs more than a small amount of Kevlar. But also the other reason you don't want uh, diamonds to be bulletproof vests is because uh, they're the hardest material. You don't want the hardest material because the hardest material will take all that force that's hitting you and pass it right along to you. You're like, ah, there you go. And it'll probably also be brittle, so it'll break on the way in. Uh, actually, it probably wouldn't break, but it will It will take all that force and send it right into your ribcage. Not, not a good material. The number plate. The chemical equation for glucose. The car is called cube. This is a, oh wait, is this the sugar cube? Yes. Carbon six, hydrogen 12, oxygen six. I saw this a long time ago. I saw this in like college. I, I absolutely love it. When in a sci-fi movie, they say, it's an element not on the periodic table. That's, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Scientist, my discoveries are useless if taken out of context. Media, oh God. Scientist claims their discoveries are useless. Yeah, pretty much. Like, oh my God, the general public understanding of like science and hypotheses and like everyone just like, is like, ah, here is like a short, simple answer for something that occurs in this giant squidgy globe full of atoms. Yeah, there's totally like one simple answer for your question and it will never change as we do more research on it. <sighs> we know nothing. We know so much and yet we still know absolutely nothing. Jesus. Ah, biologists are just a bunch of cells that talk about other cells. I hate it. <laughs> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, turtles, lizards, snakes, crocodiles, uh, birds. Chickens appear here with birds. Um, eggs already existed back here. So the chickens were kind of late to the game. We're using eggs for a lot of other things before before we got KFC. If science is influenced by politics or business, it's not science, it's politics and business. Yes, correct. If your business funds a study with a specific outcome in mind, that's not science. That's a study that a business has, you know, generated and should not be looked upon as scientific. It could be material for further scientific research. But yeah, tell me the truth. I'm, I'm ready to hear it. You can't just do the experiments. You have to analyze the data too. <laughs> See, I only got as far as Mythbusters. Is just the difference between science and dicking around is writing it down. <laughs> I was kind of analyzed it like at that point too. Zootopia 2, Zootopia 2, biologists. <laughs> yeah, I was in there like, wait, wait, what is the genealogy here? <laughs> Stephen Hawking hosted a party for time travelers, but no one came. In 2009, Stephen Hawking ran an experiment that required champagne, balloons, and oh, uh, uh, d'oeuvres, I can never say that right, to demonstrate that backward time travel probably isn't possible. First rule of time travel, you do not show up at Hawking's party. 10 to one, this was a cover. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to make one more conspiracy theory joke. It's like, no, no, he threw the party on purpose and alerted all the time travelers beforehand. Be like, don't show up at the party. And then everyone will think time travel's fake and then we can keep time traveling. That would actually be a fun book. You no, know, like like a set of public set of experiments to like disprove time travel set up by time travelers. That'd be a cool little movie. Electron behaves as a wave. Human being watches closer. Electron. Well, no, I am not doing it. Chemist in 1925. I'm going to pipette H2SO4 using my mouth. Uh, uh. Chemists now. Help. 0 0.00001 units of acetic acid fell on my glove. I mean, that's a good attitude to have for precision, especially for incredibly sensitive experiments. Actually, no, I'm just, I'm just going to side with the right hand side because safety first, even if it's trivial. Bacteria in nature, eating literal dirt, defying the physical limits of life. This is my third that extinction event in a row. Bacteria in the lab. This is not my favorite sugar. Uh, pH is off by 0.001. Is this tap water? I'm allergic. Australians have accidentally been eating a fish unknown to science. Of course they have. Thank goodness. Usually it's the other way around. Fish unknown to science is eating Australians. 
I like to think of Australians as just like, yes, everything here is trying to kill it, but we're trying to kill it back. So like the fish came out of the water and was like, I'm gonna eat you. And Australians were like, nah, light up the grill. I will major in maths. It's hard. Ow. I will major in biology. It's applied chemistry. Chemistry is applied physics, which is applied maths. Maths are hard. <laughs> yeah, this is why I never formally got any mechanical engineering degree or anything. Maths are hard.